Oh, for a substation. Okay. Having an appointed time of 5.30, I would like to call the Tuesday, March 8th, 2022, Committee of a Whole to order. Would you... Just the red lights are. Uh, Mr. Clark, would you please take the roll? Here. Alderman Gregory. Here. Alderman Williams. Here. Alderman Fulginzi. Here. Alderwoman Purchase. Here. Alderwoman DeCenso. Present. Alderman McMiniman. Here. Alderwoman Conley. Present. Alderman Donnellan. Here. Alderman Hanar. Here. Mr. Chairman, uh, quorum is present. Mr. All right, Chair. Thank, thank you. Yes, um, uh, Alderman Donnellan. Is it okay if uh, I'd like to make a motion, if it's appropriate, that we move the appointees and reappointees to the front of the agenda so that they don't have to sit through the meeting? Uh, yes, sir. Do I have a second on that? Second. second. All right. So we will do that. Um, Corporation Council, should I? Should I? Uh, uh, should we do that before the acceptance of the motion for the approval of the committee minutes? It's on the light it just won't go off. I'm sorry. Uh, I was going to say you might want to finish your procedural and then entertain a motion to move something to the front of the agenda. If that's that way, it gets your preliminary matters done. Perfect. Thank you, sir. I will. I will now accept a motion to approve the February 22, uh, 22nd, 2022 committee meetings. Thank you. Uh, it's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? All right. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, Madam Treasurer, is there a treasurer's report tonight? There is. Thank you, Chair Gregory. The corporate fund had a beginning balance in the month of February of $48,216,581. We took in total receipts of $10,454,473. We had total disbursements in the month of February of $10,113,024. That left the corporate fund with an ending balance in the month of February of $48,558,030. Of that balance, Chair Gregory, the ARPA fund balance was $14,587,007. This concludes my report, Chair Gregory. Thank you so much, Ms. Chair. Uh, any discussion on the Treasurer's report? All in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> um, are there any questions on the OBM contract report? Uh, Ottoman McMenamin? Uh, on, on the real positive side, I see we have a three snow removal emergency contracts and I think that uh, made our streets much better during the the uh, snow the three snow events so thank you to Lewis excavating and snow removal to Patterson construction and to PH Broughton and Sons Inc by the way just a another question red used to mean on these microphones that they were off now I think red means that they're on but I was so yes, confused Thank you, Tony. Oh, wow. <laughs> and uh, how do I how do I know that? Not. Because I put a little graffiti on my uh, wood here that said red means off. So I'm going to scratch that out and put red means on. Is that correct? Okay. 
So just getting back to business here, um, OBM contract report. Um, so those, good deal on the snow removals. Then on the next page, we've got um, Heartland Community Continuum of Care, 42,000 and a half. So that's above the professional services limit. And this is definitely professional services. So I think that one needs to be pulled back and then it needs to run through the city council as an ordinance because it's, I would think that's professional services. Is that under the OBM report you say? Yeah, yeah that's on the OBM report. Thank you. And I, I did talk with Amanda Long and she thought it's not too late to pull that back. And then we've got one here and this is apparently a typo, but we've got Massey, Massey and Associates, great at doing all their work they do for the North Mansion block, but it says $112,000. It's actually $12,000. Or $12, it's not 112. Thanks for that. So uh, this one would also would have been above the professional services. <laughs> yeah, the phone lines were 11, burning 11, up today with that one. Yes, yeah. it was. Yeah. 11,200. Yeah, just 12,000. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Will there be any other questions? Yes, uh, yes, ma'am, uh, Auto Woman Conley. Thank you, I, I was gonna remind you in case you forgot. Um, yeah, I just, uh, Mayor, if I could ask, so it, it sounds like we have a rendering then for the Y block? It's on. Red means on. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes. I, is that something that, that we could see also? Yeah, I think it's on the website, but uh, we'll make sure it's distributed to everybody. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? All right. All right. Uh, so, to, in order to pull those back, is is staff, Mr. Zarko, is, is staff going to pull uh, the forty-two thousand to Heartland uh, com Community uh, Heartland, the forty-two thousand to our uh, continuum of care back? All right. All right, thank you, sir. I appreciate it. All righty. Um, bef before our presentation, I, I, I would accept a motion to, to bring our uh, uh, appointees up and, and get through that process. Yes, Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to move 20 agenda items number 22082 through 087 to the front of the agenda. Second. Mm -hmm. Auto, uh, man, Hanauer. And with that, I'd like to uh, make a motion we do an omnibus vote on 082 to through 087. Do I have a, mm -hmm. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion on that? That's going to the, That's to, to debate. <coughs> debate, okay. Yes. Uh, just a comment uh, for next week. We've got some you know, outstanding appointments and reappointments. And uh, if we have reappointments to go beyond the three, like if it's the fourth reappointment, I'd like to see, I'd like to see it noted no matter what. Uh, how many um, appointments a certain appointee has had. I, I think we want to distribute these positions around as much as we can. As aldermen, we're limited to three terms. I, I don't have a problem limiting appointments, generally speaking, to three terms. Uh, a lot of these positions are highly desirable because there's a great deal of satisfaction that comes with service and to being involved in city government. So that's the rationale behind it, to allow others to um, participate in this way like I wish I could have when I first came to Springfield I never got the appointment like I've mentioned once before neither did you I believe uh, all the women no, I did not so so um, it's a great way to serve so uh, whoever puts these together um, please notate the uh, the length of the appointment thank you sir all right we will now uh, move those items to the front of the agenda for debate correct right. Right. any discussion on those yes Mr. Clerk, does the clerk have to read them? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay, 2022 082, an ordinance approving the reappointment of Gary L. Hammonds to the Board of Managers of Oak Ridge Cemetery. 2022 083, an ordinance approving the reappointment of Kathleen E. Spindell to the Board of Managers of Oak Ridge Cemetery. 2022 084, an ordinance approving the reappointment of Christina D. Cray to the Lincoln Library Board of Trustees. 2022-085, an ordinance approving the reappointment of Andre Jordan to the Lincoln Library Board of Trustees. 2022-086, an ordinance approving the reappointment of Helen Cox to the Lincoln Library Board of Trustees. 2022-087, an ordinance approving the appointment of Kimberly Cochran to the Police Community Review Commission. 
All right, thank you, sir. Uh, again, any discussion? Alderman Redpath. Yeah, I'd just like to point out that um, we lost a good person uh, that was on the Police Review Commission, Sergeant Barb Friesen, from, she was retired from the State Police. Outstanding person. Um, um, Kim Cochran is gonna take her place, and I've known Kim in a professional manner for 30 years, maybe, maybe more. She's older than I am, oh no. <laughs> Stop it. But she's a, she's an outstanding uh, candidate for this, and uh, I'm, I'm pleased to say I support her on this. Thanks. All right, good. Mr. Any Chair. Ottoman McMiniman. In, in a similar vein, uh, Chrissy Clay, who's here um, and will be the future library uh, board president, she uh, indicated that Arden Lang, who has served for many, many years as the uh, president of the library board, has left with her husband to go to New Mexico. So um, I just want to pa please pass along our appreciation to Arden Lang, who's now left the state of Illinois. Thanks a lot. All right. It, will there be anyone else? I'll well, if anyone is here okay. that would like to come up and introduce themselves, they are certainly welcome to do that. Hey, come on up. Come on up. Good evening, and thank you for the consideration of the appointment. And I'm younger than you, I think, Chuck. I'm, uh, I'm pretty sure. Everybody else. Um, and everybody else. Um, my name is Kim Cochran, and it is my pleasure to take or fill in for Barb. She was a dear friend of mine. Um, we've known each other for 35 years, and she represented the Illinois State Police with honor, integrity, and service and pride, which we stand for. Um, I served for 26 years plus at the Illinois State Police. I retired as a lieutenant colonel. Um, I'm invested in the city of Springfield. The majority of my time has been spent here in Springfield. I left for a short venture, came back. I've had assignments in the operations command in District 9 and the admin. Also, I ran the academy for three and a half years and uh, then was lucky to spend some time down downtown and 7th Street as I finished my career. So I am more than honored uh, to hopefully accept this position if, if so given, and I appreciate that and appreciate what you do for the city of Springfield. Thank you. Thank you for your service. You. Will there be anyone else? <clears throat> On a final note, I, I just want to say I have noticed, you know, for uh, in, in previous Mr. weeks. Chairman, uh, you have a couple more coming up. Oh, okay. Come on up. Well, while, while I say that, I will say that, um, we, we are pleased to see that uh, so many people have, have been here, even when it wasn't their turn to come up and do this portion. They they continue to come. I talked to Mr. Hammers. He said he was coming, so it was his time, no matter how long it took, so we appreciate you. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Mayor, Chair, Alderwomen, that was first. Alderman, thank you so much for considering to reappoint me. Serving Oak Ridge is truly a great honor for all of us and it is the jewel of the city. And I truly am honored to be in that position. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Chairman. Uh, my name is Gary Hammonds, and I, am, I serve currently as uh, Vice President of the Board of Managers for Oak Ridge. And it is a pleasure uh, to serve. Uh, this is my third reappointment. And uh, I think that the um, uh, consistency uh, in in serving and some continuity uh, is important, uh, especially in a, uh, uh, in, for Oak Ridge in uh, maintaining uh, the integrity of that facility. Uh, so I, I appreciate your our reconsideration of uh, the reappointment, and it's a, a pleasure to serve. Okay. Thank, thank, you. You. Thank, you. thank you. All right, thank you. Should have known. <laughs> Clean that one. Uh, Mr. Mayor, fellow clerk, and uh, aldermen, alder persons, uh, good to be here with you this evening. I'm Andre Jordan. I'll be serving as the president of the Lincoln Board uh, Library. So uh, Christina Cray uh, and Helen Cox, uh, it's been great serving out my first term with them, and I'm looking forward to a second appointment here. Uh, but yeah, great work, a lot of changes here at the library, and a very promising future. So uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Andre. Thank you. Thank you. All right, will there be anyone else? I want to make sure. All right. Uh, it has been moved and seconded. Uh, uh, is there any? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any against? All right. We will now go back and <coughs> have our presentation, Mr. McCarthy.
McCartney. All the appointees don't leave. This is going to be some exciting stuff I'm about to talk about. <laughs> Very stuff exciting. always is, Bill. Yeah. Well, it's really going to be a doozy tonight because I'm going to get technical on you. I'm sorry about that in advance. I hope I don't make too many heads spin, but the reality of the situation is to, to get to the heart of the matter, we've got to get technical. Uh, and the reason I'm doing this tonight is just there's some misinformation that's been reported out there, some misinformation or things taken out of context, and um, it's not necessarily anyone's fault. As I told the reporter last week, uh, related to the news story, uh, this, this, a lot of things um, she didn't understand, but she was had to go forward with that news story anyway, as I was told. So, um, but again, it's very technical. There's a disconnect between budgeting and actual colas and increases, so we're going to try and clarify some of that tonight. If you have any questions, please feel free to stop me. Like I said, this is going to get technical a little bit, and I hate getting technical in this forum, but as I said, I think it's unavoidable. So let's start with something that's pretty basic. When colas are budgeted and increases are budgeted, Unless there is a reason for somebody to have an increase in the budget, and that's there are some each and every year, but it's a relatively small part of the non-union population. She was oh. waving by. We were oh. waving to Katie Spindell. Sorry, I thought maybe you couldn't hear me or something like that. Sorry about that. Trying to throw me off my game. I get it. <laughs> There's a reason. When COLAs are put in a budget, everybody gets the same one. Okay, so the story and, and this, this paper that's been going around and the story that came out last week made it seem like directors or managers are getting more than everybody else. That's not true. It doesn't matter if you're at the top of the pay scale or you're at the bottom of the pay scale. Your COLA is the same. If you run the math, whether the reporter did it or on this sheet or whatever, if you run the math for every non-union employee unless they've got a reason to have some extra in there that was budgeted, which isn't guaranteed, by the way, but we'll get to that. The math's going to work out the same. The percentages are going to be the same. And if anybody wants to see an example, I ran, put on a spreadsheet an example, my salary and <coughs> budget increase next to somebody else in my department who's not a director. And uh, the percentages are the same. There's no difference in what's handed out to management from a COLA standpoint. There are four primary reasons why somebody might get more than the COLA. They're up there on the screen or on the sheets in front of you. A promotion, those happen. It's the only thing, the only instance where somebody might get an increase over and above the 5% cap that's in city code. Those other reasons, whether it's a merit increase, a negotiated increase when somebody was hired, like maybe somebody's hired at a certain salary, but over the next couple of years, assuming they do a good job, They've been negotiated an increase, whatever the reason may be, and sometimes those happen. Incentives to remain, remain at the city, like uh, Chief Winslow. Even in that case, 5% cap. Nobody's getting more than a 5%, not unless we come to the council for that. And in 11 years that I've been here, that's not happened yet. So promotion is the only way that somebody gets more than a 5%. Anybody who has gotten a raise, we've ran reports, we can demonstrate, we can give you a history of increases, and we'll get to one individual who's been prominently discussed in a moment. I want to talk about timing. There is a difference between what is budgeted and what an actual COLA is. A lot of it has to do with timing. When we budget a COLA, we budget for a half year. A budgeted COLA is actually a hybrid of two years. It's half of the previous year plus half of the current budget year. And if those don't align, if they're not the same, which is the case in 22 and 23, you can't do budget to budget. It doesn't work. Last year we budgeted, or ended up getting, I think it was 2% last year. We budgeted 2.25% this year. But we only budgeted 1.5% last year. We'll get to that again. So when you have the annualization of the prior year, especially if it doesn't, match up with the previous budget, then you've got to take that, mix it with half the first year when raises are 
projected to be in September. Typically, that's what we do six months. It's not at the beginning of the year, despite what the report said the other day. That's how you get the budget number. It's not going budget to budget because you're crossing fiscal years. The only way that would work is if we said last year we had a 2% budgeted and granted, and this year we had a 2% budgeted and granted. Then it would work because you got one, half of one, plus the other half of one from last year, plus half of the new one this year. It would work out that way. That's not what happens. So you can't use budget to budget. Timing is a big part of that. This 3% 3.2% increase that was featured prominently in the story last year. That is a two-year number. It's a hybrid number over a couple of years. And again, take that 3.2, look at any other non-unit employee, someone who's not a director, anybody you want. Guess what? It's going to be 3.2% for them. The numbers are the same. This isn't something special going to higher-ups or anything else. They're treated the exact same way. Why is it 3.2%? That doesn't seem to make sense. Well, it does when you go to the next point and you realize that there's a fallacy with the math, not just in the report, but, but this sheet here, for example. Why? Because it fails to account that in this fiscal year, there are 262 working days. Typically, there are 260. Last year, there were 260 working days. If you normalize this year from 262 down to 260, that 3.2% becomes 2.38%. It's about three quarter of a percentage difference. That's a big difference. That's material. But that wasn't done. It was just straight budget to budget. And when you do that, and like on this sheet, it, so, it shows 1.9% increase for, for several individuals, including myself. Again, that's because it includes 262 working days. If it was 260, it would be what was actually budgeted, what the COLA will actually be, well, half of, which is 1.125% or half of 2.25%. So you have to take that into account. What else do we have? Oh, here we go. I mentioned this earlier. So there is an interplay between budgeting and COLAs and departmental add-ons. This has been, this is the case this year. So this a particular individual, our cemetery director, her picture was featured prominently, so I think I can talk about this, was shown to have an 11.4% increase this year? 14.2. What's that? 14.2. 14.2. I think the news report said 11. Regardless of the fact, what happens when a department, I told you earlier, there are sometimes when departments will put extra in for somebody because they're going to go to the mayor and ask for that. Doesn't mean they're going to get it, but they're going to ask for it, so they're just going to go ahead and put it in. Okay, when that happens, we don't worry about it because it's usually small and immaterial when we're trying to budget thousands and thousands of lines. So what you get is our department puts in a global COLA for everyone, non-union. Then the departments themselves will stick in a little bit of money here or there for individuals that they're planning to ask for increases. So you have that built on top of the other. Doesn't mean they're going to get it because people are capped at 5%. So this year, yes, in LaShonda's case, that what happened. It's budgeted higher. Again, small amount. We don't have time to go back and look at all those individual. And a lot of times we don't even know about it in the department. They might just put it in there. But regardless of what's in there, if she were to be given a full 5%, that would be it. She wouldn't get the COLA on top of it. And that happened last year. She was granted a 5% increase. When the COLAs came out, she got zero from the COLA because she was maxed out. And that's what we do each and every time that somebody gets a merit increase or a pre-negotiated increase or whatever the case may be. We look at what their increases have been. HR does a query. They run a query, they do a report, and they look at anybody who is at that level. If somebody had already gotten, say, a 4% increase, when the COLAs come out, they get one. They don't get the full thing. Nothing more than 5%. So yes, the budget number is a little bit higher, but she's not going to get that. She'll never get that. Because why? It's against city code. So that's just a budgeting quirk that happens when you've got one group doing a global, and then the individual departments will stick a little money in for a person here or there. Um, but again, few and far between, and it's immaterial, and it's not something we typically worry about in most instances. Um, been doing it, just not been an issue until now. And then the last thing I want to talk about is budgeting. Just because a COLA is budgeted doesn't mean it's going to happen. COLAs were budgeted in 2017 and 2020, and zero was given out due to fiscal 
issues at the time. You all remember that pandemic and then back when we had that issue and the tax increases happened. So non-union individuals received 0% in both those years, even though it was budgeted. So just because something is in there doesn't mean it has been, been given. And sometimes there's a differential the other way. Last year we budgeted 1.5%, 2% was given. Why? Because, well, you all know how the year ended up, plus there was recognition that there hadn't been an increase the previous year, nor was there one in 2017. So the mayor gave a little bit more than the 1.5%, he gave 2% in light of everything, all the other circumstances. So again, just because something's budgeted a certain way doesn't mean it ends up that way. And lastly, the report talked about Forgetting the wording, but I'm going to paraphrase. paraphrase. City, some city managers or leaders started out with larger pay raises or something this year. We, nobody's gotten anything. We budget half year. Just because it's in the budget doesn't mean it kicks in March 1st. That man up there in the middle has to grant those increases, and he hasn't done so, at least not from a COLA standpoint, and I don't know that anybody has received anything as of yet. Budget's not gospel, so going budget to budget, it just doesn't mean it's going to happen. So that goes back to what we're talking about, the compound and the five and one. Public Works may come asking for that increase. He may say no, or he may say COLA. I mean, we, we won't, we'll know at the end of the year what he gives. So I'm going to try and tie three concepts together, and this is where it gets a little bit con convoluted, but try and bear with me. So you have the issue of... The numbers not, the budget not being gospel when it comes to what's actually handed out. You have the, the timing issue and the annualization issue, and you have the work days. So the TV report from last week had several individuals, including myself, listed as a 3.2% raise this year. Not true. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to back out the 200, we're going to normalize the 262 working days down to 260. That's going to take that 3.2% down to 2.38. Then what we're going to do is we're going to look at last year what was budgeted versus what was actually granted. What was budgeted was a 1.5, half of which is 0.75, but what was granted was actually 2. So instead of, remember when I told you when we budget, it's half the previous year, the annualization of the previous year? So we're not annualizing 0.75, we're annualizing 1.25. So you're starting out with a 1.25 from last year because we only budgeted 0.75, right? Then you're going to look at what was budgeted this year, 2.25, half of which is 1.125. So let's take the 1.25 from last year, annualization, let's add it to the half, the 1.125 this year. What do we get? 2.38. Just math. So in summary, you can't get an accurate depiction of salaries or increases by looking at budget-to-budget -budget numbers. There often are nuances and technicalities that need to be explained. Timing, work days in a year, actual versus budget disparity, 5% cap constraints. It's not an accurate depiction, not usually. It can be, it just usually isn't for a variety of reasons. So if you want to know, come to us. We'll tell you. We can run reports. We can explain it to you. We'll give you accurate information. It's what we're here for. We do it. Payroll's in my department. Budgeting's in my department. We're the folks to come see. That's why we're here. We're happy to help. Any questions? Thank you, Mr. What, one, one, one moment. I got uh, Alderman Redpath. So, Bill, w why would we give raises in the middle of the year and not and make it a 5% raise in the middle of the year when it really is only going to be a, a partial of that year? Why wouldn't we just give that raise? Why wouldn't we give? I'm, if you, I'm sure if I'm you give somebody a 5% raise in the middle of the year, mm -hmm. why wouldn't you just say it's not a 5% raise, it's a... 2.5% raise or whatever it comes out to. Because because typically it's it's annualized. So it's September to September. So you and what you're saying is you would give a let's just say a 2% just to make the numbers easy. I think if I'm following you what you're saying is why not just give them a 1% if we're planning a 2% why not just give them a 1% in September so you calculate the days based on if you're going to give them a 5% raise overall, make it a bit based on the days that they're, that they're going to receive that raise in that budget session. So it wouldn't come out to 5%. It would come out to 2% or 3%, whatever the number of the days were. Why would we do that? Because, Why would we put 5% in there? Because raises are annual, 
and they're but you're saying we're you're saying we're crossing two two deadlines we're we're crossing the budget starts on on in april and the the fiscal year starts in january one why would we do that why would we give them so the the fiscal year and the budget start march 1st what you would do if what you're saying is we would have to give half from the previous year and then immediately on March 1st give the no, other that's half not what I'm to saying. make it annual. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that if you're going to give somebody a 5% raise for a year, you're going to budget it from the, if it's in November, you give it to them till March 1. So you're going to only give them that portion of that of, of that raise and not call it a 5% raise. And 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 so, so we don't cross those two numbers. We shouldn't be giving raises in the middle of the year unless there's a special reason of a promotion and you listed the four areas of what it should be. And, I, and we agree with that. But in certain, there's a couple situations that didn't happen. And the 14.2% raise is in the budget. So either, either you're going to give that raise out or you're hiding money there. Which one are you doing? It's neither one of those. And we're not going to give a 14.2% raise out unless we're the council. I know that. And that's the point. The point is, is that it was listed as a 4.2% raise. It wasn't going to anywhere else other than that one position. So that means that there's money in there for a 14.2% raise. Right. But again, raises are annual and the timing is the middle of the year. I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure how I can I don't know understand. Where you're that. well, we mirrors. budget that way with what you're saying. That's how we budget. Yeah, absolutely. That, it's, it, you're you're we, selling snake oil here. It's not that's not the same thing. I'm telling you, you're 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 hold, either holding money back or you're or you're or holding money that, that, you, that you're going to move somewhere else later. So that, that means you're hiding money. Two things. One, we can't move money out of personnel lines. Two, if I was going to hide money, it wouldn't be there. Where are you hiding it at? <laughs> I'm not going to tell you that. Ottoman Williams. I'm much better than that. Yeah, Ottoman uh, uh, Williams. Well, okay, I'm going to leave that. Well, I wasn't done. I wasn't done. <laughs> um, okay. okay. So the 262, 262 days versus 260, mm -hmm. and that two-day difference, uh, can you do that percentage again for me? Yeah, it's about 0. 0.77, 77 basis points or 0.77%. Yeah, because just, you're just at, it looks like you're adding two, I mean, two days worth of pay to it. And so it does increase it that much. It, it is that much of a differential. And I actually, if you want to see it, I've got the well, no, math I, on I this just, sheet. Just to hear it don't sound right, right. But, but I trust right. you. Mm -hmm. It I does. If you to. take the, if you, and a simple way to do it, Alderman, is take the, the amount Divide it by 262, and then multiply it by 260 to normalize, and then look at your year-over-year -year increase, and you'll and you can see the math and how it changes. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go uh, Alderman Hanauer, and then we'll go uh, uh, Alderman Fujinji. So, so next year's budget, this is what I want because <laughs> I'm gonna follow what Chuck what Chuck said. I want a list of who's gonna get the raises. And I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to cut them in half. I'm going to cut the amount that you're putting in the green sheet in half. Because what you're saying to us is you're putting a 5% in the green sheet, but it's really 2.5%. That's, that's what you just told us. No. no because, you're not, you, because you're not using it for six months. It's, it's, like, it's like a few years back when Alderman Donlin and I went through and we sat with, I think, CWLP and whoever – and we said, okay, you've got 10 jobs here. When are you going to fill them? I'm not going to fill them for six months. Okay, we're taking half that money back. It's, it's no different than this. Except that is for, not any different than this, Bill. It is because that's ex <laughs> what you're saying is exactly what we do. We don't budget someone's full year increase this sh in, a, in a given year. We don't. We, don't do that. Uh, we only budget six months. So if we expect if to give somebody a 2% increase in the middle of the year, we're only budgeting 1%. That's what I'm trying to say. We're not look at, sticking look extra money those, in there. You look at some of those on the green sheets, and you, you take last year's green sheet number mm -hmm. and this year's green sheet number, and you figure out the percentage, it, then some, something screwed. That's what this whole presentation is about, Alderman. All these reasons that are up there on the screen, that's why it looks screws uh, I, going you know, budget to budget. But if and, you give and me the other any thing that, that I don't understand, I thought we paid, unless people are getting paid an uh, hourly salary, they all are getting paid hourly. It's based on an hourly uh, I, I mean, whole conversation I guess conversation is a big mistake. And um, you should have, all you had to say, Director McCarty. I'm still. Let him finish. Let, let Autumn and Hanauer finish and then we'll. we'll I, I don't understand. I mean, I thought we paid by, 
an annual sure. on the annual and it, right. the number of days that doesn't, doesn't matter i did that i just no. learned that the, tonight. The num yeah the number of days that they work they actually get paid for the number of days that they work it's not like an annual set salary no matter what like january 1 to january 1 it's based on working days all right uh, automate i know you had a rebuttal sir you good automate for junji uh why don't we just make it simple and make it an annual January 1, start the budget so everybody's... March 1? March 1. No, no. start Our, January no. 1. Our use fiscal the, year starts in March. Use the... If, uh, you, if you want the budget to budget and the coal is to match up, you need to start and grant raises on March 1st. Correct. Like normal. If you want to make it simple so that you can use green sheets, we can do that. There's a fiscal impact to that. One of the reasons why raises are later in the year is to save money and for cash flow purposes. It's been that way since I've been here and before. So, so basically then the simple way I would think would be from January 1, start off the calendar year and make Incre the budget coincide. Well, the bud to coincide with the budget, sir, you want March 1 to March 1, That's our fiscal That's our fiscal not year. January 1, because you're crossing two fiscal years again. If the goal is to not cross fiscal year, why does the fiscal years, year have to be March one? No, it, that's what our that's fiscal what year is. is. You would have—I mean, you could technically change it, but that would involve a well, tremendous but, amount of. But we take work. office in, in April, so we—that's why it started then. That's that's why. Auto woman, Desenzo. Thank you, Chair. Um, I don't know why we don't budget to start the raises on March 1, like Alderman Fulgenzi was just suggesting. That's how they do it at the state. We know when we're going to get our colas, or if we're not going to get a cola, we know the first day of the fiscal year. That's when it goes into effect. That's what makes sense. I didn't see the super secret piece of paper. I didn't see the news report. Um, so, you know, I mean, I just think there's a very easy answer here. And I think what Alderman Redpath is saying is because this is done in such a way that it gets tricky and it doesn't appear very transparent. So I think let's get into the practice of giving colas on the first day of the fiscal year. I, that way it just stops the insanity. One of the only downsides to that, I mean, I don't care whatever the mayor wants to do and, and you all want to do, it doesn't matter to me. The only issue you have with that is one of the, one of the, tools that you have is if you run into a difficult fiscal year, and I'll use this year as an example. Markets are a mess. They're talking about stagflation. They're talking about recession. We could be in a, a we could have our revenues impacted heavily. Waiting six months gives the mayor an idea to gauge what's going on and then decide whether or not a full COLA should be granted, no COLA, whatever the case may be. That's the only thing I can think of from a, a benefit standpoint of, of waiting. <clears throat> Before I come here, uh, Alderman Donna, I want to give uh, Alderman McMenamin a chance to speak. Director McCarty, you've given this the best shot you can give it, but I've tried. I've all tried. you had to say, all you had to say, is to come up to that podium and say, "We've studied the numbers, and there's been no violation of city code on the five percent rule. The five percent rule is you can't give anyone more than five percent during a twelve-month period, unless." It's a promotion, or unless it's approved by the city council. That's all you had to say. Everything else is just mass confusion. That's all you had to say. And if anyone disagrees with that, you know where they take it? They take it to the, our inspector general. Exactly. That's why we have one. So now you're nodding your head, Alderman Redpath, but that's you're the guy I'm, that that's started. That's where I'm going next, brother. That's where I'm going next. Th this all started because Redpath did some independent uh, research and in my opinion came up with all the wrong conclusions well, and in the process know? how do you know because uh, I, I went to HR is, is the budget for well, that line speak, item is that line item 14.2 percent so you I didn't come up with the wrong numbers Alderman you're wrong let him speak because you went and looked at the budget sheets which don't show a rate of pay to get a rate of pay you go to human resources and they can give you an hourly rate for every city employee, including us around this horse table. And uh, that's where you get the information. And that's where I got it from, because I asked for the printout sheets. I got a printout sheet here, um, the hourly rate that our, uh, our own uh, Jeanette Bland has received since she joined uh, the city council staff. 
And what it shows is that, um, well, it shows all 24 pay raises since <coughs> 2002, all 24 pay raises since 2002. And I really appreciate that we should have taken that into executive session to talk about it the way we're supposed to talk about things. Um, but at any rate, um, that's all you had to say, McCarty, uh, Director McCarty. And if anyone has a problem with uh, pay raises around here, take it to the Inspector General or to Human Resources, which is what I did first. And if I had seen a problem, I would have taken it to the Inspector General because we've smeared a lot of people. It got on TV. And now uh, I think we're embarrassing ourselves now by talking about it so much at the start of a public meeting. Alderman Donnellan. Yeah, I, I just, uh, M Director McCarty, uh, I appreciate you trying to make it simple this evening. <laughs> and uh, it got a little confusing. Uh, Alderman Redpath, I know he's been around this, this horseshoe a lot longer than anybody else. And uh, I, I respect your ability to ask questions. Um, I, I personally appreciate the explanation being here out in the open so we can all hear it. We have newer people. Um, I, you know, you're correct. Uh, budgets traditionally, excuse me, raises traditionally are giving sometime during the fiscal year. I think it's responsible to budget what you anticipate those being and not overinflating the line. Uh, Mayor, uh, I, you know, obviously that's your decision. Uh, we're in an unknown uh, economic climate, to say the least. And the fact that you didn't do it at the beginning of the year, I appreciate because I don't know where we're going to be in six months. I don't think any of us do. Uh, these are these are just crazy times, and uh, uh, but I, I, I do appreciate the questions being asked. Any, any alderman I know, and the mayor, everybody that's on the council, should feel that they have the ability to ask the questions. I didn't see the news story. I, I really can't comment on that. I don't know what was said. Uh, I wasn't interviewed. Sure. I, don't, I don't, don't know. I didn't see it, but uh, I, I do know that I appreciate the questions. Uh, uh, Alderman Hanauer and I did indeed go through line by line and, and sit down with Director Brown and some of his uh, assistant directors a few years ago, as Ralph said, and, and uh, made, made cuts accordingly uh, because, of, because of the uh, hiring lag that occurs. Uh, we fortunately didn't have to do that this year, but uh, I, I think it's responsible to do, it, it, do the raises if there are raises granted sometime during the fiscal year. So anyway, I guess the moral of the story here is thank you for the presentation. Um, <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> and it could, probably could have been a little simpler, but <laughs> I, I hey, wish it could the discussion been. is always good. Mm -hmm. So I will I will ask before before we move on to anyone else. <laughs> eight and five. Since you haven't spoken, do you have anything to say to this? I just want to make sure, well, ladies. I wasn't going to say anything, but Alderman Donnellan just said it. I'm new up here, and listening to the explanation was good for me. I would say that Alderman McMiniman, sometimes you take it a little far with telling somebody what they should be doing. I appreciate him coming up here to explain this to us, and I don't want to be intimidated to not be able to ask questions. All right. Uh, I'm just going to respond to that because, you know, when, when an alderman that's been around for 30 years says, hey, I've, there's 14 percent pay raises, order. and the <laughs> may I speak? Continue, order, continue. Hey, continue. So I'm not asking for you to be intimidated. If I have intimidated Alderman Redpath, then I'm succeeded. Because what he did was inappropriate to refer to unofficial records about people who have gotten pay raises here, including our cemetery director. And I think it was unfair to her for people to say that she got a 14% pay raise when she, in fact, did not. That's what I'm talking about. I just, I just wanted to be clear and say thank you. All right. Alder, Alderwoman Conley, and then I'm going to go Alderman Redpath, and I'm going to let the mayor finish. And we'll move on. <clears throat> Thank you, Chair. Um, you know, and, and I understand some of this is uncomfortable to talk about raises because, especially in the private sector, that's your private, personal, personal information. Um, but as, as we all know, we're dealing with public dollars and public service employees, so um, we're not evaluating anyone in this open session. We're having um, slightly confusing conversation about, about how public dollars are managed. So. I appreciate the presentation. Um, I'm, I'm glad to know I'm not the only one who didn't see the, the news story. Um, but it, it is important for us to be able to ask questions um, and, and have a clear understanding. And Alderwoman Purchase, I, I know exactly where you're coming from. It can be intimidating sometimes to ask those questions. Um, but we are the stewards of these dollars. And, and so thank you very much for that. Um,
I will just, I, was, I wasn't gonna say anything simply because I, I agree with um, what Alderwoman DeCenso put out is that it is nice working for the state to know, I mean, that's part of the budgeting also. This is when the raises come and it's at the beginning of a, of a time frame. So, um, but I guess also for the state generally, it's a January, July, so maybe that's a six month too. Anyway, appreciate the conversation. Um, and again, it is important that we have this in an open manner. And it is important that we have it in a respectful manner. So thank you very much. All right, I'm gonna uh, allow Alderman Redpath to respond. He's been waiting early. And first off, mayor. first off, I took 14.2% off of what they presented to us. I didn't go to the press with it. I went to the mayor with it. In a private session, I said, there's 14.2% increase listed for this, for this position. And he said, that's wrong. That's not, that's not what's gonna happen. That's exactly what he said. And for you to come out here and attack me because I, I showed what was on their document, at, I didn't go to the press, I went to him. So you're wrong, absolutely wrong. And you're wrong for letting him get out of order. You need to take the class. Now we all out of order. Yeah, that's so right. Mayor. And, and it's gonna happen again. Oh. Chill. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I don't think it's we working. all lions. We all lions. We all lions. We all right. Really, uh, a couple of points of clarification. I think, uh, I think it's working, Mayor. It can't hear you. I think it's on. It's on. There we go. There, go. there you go. Thanks, Tony. <laughs> but a uh, couple of things. One is, uh, you know, all due respect to everybody, let's add clarity to everything. You know, what was brought up was the, uh, it was brought up in the public meeting. That's Thank where you. this all started from. Exactly. And so um, to bring out, uh, especially our Oak Ridge Cemetery director, and then, you know, have that uh, played out in public, that's not a good thing. Uh, because in reality, that wasn't the case. So, you know, what needs to be clear is this is all new, 14.2% in the green sheets for one person, that should never be put in there. So that's OBM's uh, misdirection or over, uh, lack of oversight or whatever it is. But from now on, any green sheet should only be 5%. On, that's each individual position. So it should never be over 5% unless a promotion is coming forward. And then the council should know about it. There's no <coughs> hidden secrets with regards to that. So uh, that's the main thing. But to uh, just give you a general idea, and Alderman Donlin pointed to it, is you don't jump out of the gate. That's probably why the state's in a financial mess sometimes, is they jump out of the gate, give everybody raises, and the uh, projections of revenue doesn't come in, and then you can't reel it back in. That's a disaster. So what we've always done is wait and see what the revenue sources are. And if you can, you award the uh, raises. But you give a 5% raise. This over two areas, are, what you're talking about is pro rata raises. That's what Director McCarty's alluding to. But you're not gonna cut the raise in half, otherwise you're giving them a 2.5% raise, or 1%, or whatever it is. 5% is 5% in my book. So they get 5% this year, it's gonna carry over to next year as a 5% raise. Otherwise, if you play this uh, daily thing, uh, that's not correct. What uh, Director McCarty sometimes confuses the issue by not speaking in uh, layman's terms. And in layman's terms, what he's talking about, how many days are left in the fiscal year. That's why it's not a true 5%, because if you take my salary at the beginning of the year, halfway through I get 5%, you calculate out the remaining days, and that's not gonna equal 5% over my salary, but I did get the 5% raise because next year, I'm gonna get that 5% on this year's wages. But uh, we shouldn't cloud the issues, we should just uh, call it what it is, and it's gonna be a 5% or a 2%, in this case, the COLA, uh, we're gonna have a fire contract. And for the record, that's 2% over the next four years, averaged, and so that's what we're talking about, and that's how we need to speak. We shouldn't cloud the issues on days or whatever and uh, speak to it for what it is, but the green sheets from now on, next year, None of them should be above 5%. Each individual line item should be 5% for an individual salary position. And that's where the confusion started. Yep. Again, that's a timing issue, and I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to, for that... Ended up being a big issue. Yeah. Well, <laughs> again, with that particular individual, there are more things at play. She was budgeted for an increase 
that was much lower than what she got. That has to annualize into this green sheet budget. Then you have another increased department built on top of that. Plus you have that overlay of the global. That's why it's 14.2. But when essence, she would get no more than 10% over two years, five and five. But, she got but five. I understand the confusion. She got five the year before. She got five last year. Yeah. That, that's her only race she's had since she started. I understand. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm but not, you're right. But you're right. I'm you're not right. talking about an individual's raise. I don't, I don't care. If the mayor gives her 5%, she does. If it goes over 5%, they got to come back to us. Right. 14.2% was in the line item, and that's what, our dis, that's what the discussion is about. So if you're not going to spend that whole thing there, where are you doing with the rest of the money? Yep. Okay. Yep. It's 14.2 over last year because last year did not include a 5% increase for her last year. It increased, it was something much lower. That's the issue. She was budgeted for a 1.5% increase last year. She got five. So that has to be built into this budget plus the FY23 increase. That's why it looks so yeah, large. I'm going to go, do the math and I'll send it out We need to go to March to March. I'll, 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 did it. I'll, yeah. I'll do the math and send it out to everybody. But even in this case, even if she got an increase March 1, it would still be, look like a bigger number if you're going budget to budget. Thank you. You're welcome. Appreciate you. I dare to ask any more other questions. <laughs> but I will say uh, uh, any other questions, feel free to meet with him. But we will uh, move on to our uh, ordinances table to remaining in committee. Uh, Mr. Clark, could you please read those words? Will do. 2021 336, 2021 337, 2022 005, 2022 027. 2022-033. Anyone uh, wish to take any action on those? All right. Sure. Oh, sure. <clears throat> oh, sure. All in one comment. I'm sorry. Sorry. Thank you. I just wanted to check. I, I believe um, Corporation Council, were we going to get an update on the, um, the 337? Yes. We will have that. Um, aren't working. Try to press it one time. Red means on. Is that, go. Is that on? Okay, yeah. sorry. I apologize. Um, yes, we are working on a revision to that, and we will have it, as, I think I mentioned at the next council meeting. Okay, sorry. I, I may end up, <clears throat> excuse me, we may end up, apologize, uh, withdrawing this, presenting a new ordinance. Uh, the mayor had asked for, and a couple of uh, individuals had asked for some better definitions on medians about for safety reasons, you know, uh, regulating a uh, person's ability to be in medians for uh, safety reasons. So we're looking at the definitions that are in the ordinance. Thank you. And I, I just bring this up because obviously it's an issue of concern. Um, I just want to point out, I, we talk about um, Sangman and Dirksen as being the most dangerous intersection in the city. But if you look at those totals for accidents, it's those intersections all along Veterans Parkway that go from Ward 9 through Ward 10, or sorry, Ward 8 through Ward 10. I, I just promoted myself, Alderman Donnellan. Um, yes, you did. But <laughs> those intersections combined have the most in accidents in, in our city. And I've been going at different times of the day and night, and, and there are people there fairly consistently panhandling. So um, obviously we want to do something that's that's in line with, with everyone's civil rights, but... Um, that is still an issue of concern. So thank you, Corporation Council. Yeah, right, yes, thank sir. you. Uh, Alder uh, Man Hanauer. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, at the request of uh, Director Bottom, he would like to pull out 2022-027, right, Nate? Um, we'll go to debate. Or, yeah, to debate. All right, do I have a second? Second. All right, so we will pull 2022-027. Uh, from committee to debate consideration. And I'll go ahead and read that one. Thank you. I appreciate 2022 it. 027, an ordinance authorizing the exchange of real estate between the City of Springfield and St. John's Hospital of the Hospital Sisters of the Third Order of St. Francis, authorizing the vac vacation of right away and granting the easements in J. Whitney's addition and Wells and Peck's addition to the City of Springfield relating to usable segment three of the Springfield Rail Improvements Project held on 28. 2022. I appreciate it. Sir, it's been moved and seconded for debate. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any against? Ayes have it. Uh, now for the ordinance for committee consideration. 
Ms. Clark, could you please read the ordinance for CWLP? Will do. CWLP 2022-065, an ordinance authorizing a one-year contract extension under contract number UW21-02-77, water main installation for section C only, with no additional funding and authorized with Petersburg Plumbing and Excavating LLC for a total amount payable of $721,414 for all section of said contract for the Office of Public Utilities. Good set. Second. Okay. All right, it's been moved and uh, seconded for consent. All in favor? Aye. Against the uh, ayes have it. 2022 066, an ordinance accepting the bid and authorizing execution of contract UE 22 01 78, heavy equipment maintenance and repairs at Dahlman with Roland Machinery Company in an amount not to exceed $300,000 for the Office of Public Utilities. That's that. Second. Been moved and uh, seconded for consent. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any nays? Ayes have it. 2022-067, an ordinance authorizing leasing of additional vehicles in the amount of $1,839,096 under proposal number UE21-02, electric and T&D truck leasing with LTEC Industries Incorporated for a total amount not to exceed $3,212,720 for the Office of Public Utilities. Move for debate. Second. It's been moved and seconded for debate. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any nays? No nays. Ayes have it. 2022-068, an ordinance accepting a contract with Limbaugh Construction Company, Incorporated, for Eastdale Substation 138 KV Foundation in an amount not to exceed $62,010 for the Office of Public Utilities. For consent. Second. Move the second. For consent. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays? Ayes have it. 2022-069, in ordinance approving a master services agreement with the Illinois Department of Innovation and Technologies, DOIT, an Illinois state agency in an amount not to exceed $132,000 for internet service on behalf of the city of Springfield for a five-year term for the Office of Public Utilities. Move consent. Second. Moved and seconded for consent. Any discussion? <laughs> all in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, all opposed? No opposed? Ayes have it. 2022-070, an ordinance <coughs> approving and authorizing execution of a le lease agreement for 7020 Brunk Cemetery Road for the Office of Public Utilities. Move for consent. Second. It's been moved and seconded for consent. Any discussion? A question, Mr. Chair. Uh, this is just an information question. Uh, Director Brown, who, who is responsible? We've got uh, several leases coming up here uh, in these ordinances involving 6,000 acres. Uh, one of them. Who is uh, currently responsible for managing our property and making sure that our leases are appropriate and that we uh, make these uh, leases available to uh, as appropriate to all that may wish to lease from us? Uh, so basically, we have two individuals, Mike Romer and Dan Brill, that, that handle our leases for the lake and Hunter uh, Lake properties. <coughs> okay. And how long have they per been performing those duties? Probably Dang, about three, time. four years, roughly each. Okay. They're hired play. Dan was promoted maybe about three years ago, four years ago, and Mike Romer started uh, new employment with us. Um, it seems like probably about three years ago, maybe. Okay. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mr. Clark? Uh, it's been moved and seconded for consent, am I correct? All right. All in favor? All right. All right. None opposed? Mr. Clark? <laughs> 2022-071, an ordinance approving eight separate recreational leases with various tenants for a one-year term for the Office of Public Utilities. <coughs> moved to consent. Okay. It's been moved and seconded for consent. Any discussion? So do you have one question? I'm in the Hanover. I, I assume that these do go out for bid, correct? Did the, Doug, I hate to have you come back up, but... I assume these these are let out to bid when whenever possible, so that I mean I, I understand the, we allow you know some people get them the, lot, like with the recreational lease. The problem with that um, is that uh, you know if you, if you saw last year we decided not to actually do one of the leases last year because of the the the, the issues that it caused with neighbors mm -hmm. um, there. Um, you're pitting uh, people you know those neighbors against neighbors. I guess you might say. Um, and, and frankly, we just don't have the manpower to go out and deal with, you know, daily issues like that. Right. Um, so we allow the homeowners that are adjacent to the piece of property to bid on that. Okay. Um, and if there's more than one, then we probably just won't do it. Okay. That's good. That makes know. sense. 
Thank you. Just for ease of management, really. I mean, we want we want a little bit of extra revenue, but we don't want to have to put so much into it that it really costs us more than what we're making off of it. Right. Well, I just didn't know if, if someone if someone contacts us, which I've had people ask. I didn't know what the what the policy was, and that that makes sense if the people live out there that that they would have first cracks. Yeah, and then last year was our first year, so this is our second year doing it. So we're still trying to kind of feel our way through it to to see how it works and. Okay. And maybe we'll make, be able to make improvements in the future, you know. Right. Okay. Thank you. All right. It's been moved and seconded. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Uh, aye. None opposed. I was happy. 2022-072, an ordinance approving 29 separate farm leases with various tenants for a one-year term for the Office of Public Utilities. Move for consent. consent. Do I have a yeah. second? All right. All right. It's been moved and seconded for consent. Any discussion? Yeah, this is the one that really caught my eye because... Uh, it's 29 separate leases for a total of 6,000 acres. And um, the, um, the amount of revenue we will receive is $568,000. So it, it breaks out to $100 per acre. Um, if this is real tillable land, then the farmers around here know that you get two, three to three and a half thousand, hundred dollars per acre. Um, I, what we really need here is someone who really knows agriculture and farm ground and what it goes for and can review this periodically just to make sure that the city is getting all it is due. So that's the, the comment. All right. It's been moved to we, and we may have those people. I just don't know. But it's, it, the managers need to just keep their eye on this. Thank you for that point. Uh, any other discussion? It's been moved and seconded. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. None opposed. Ayes have it. Public Works, 2022-073, an ordinance authorizing execution of a contract for purchase or sale, sale of real estate with KJL Enterprises, LLC, in an amount not to exceed $87,957 in closing costs in the amount of $2,043, and for a total amount not to exceed $90,000 for the property located at 325 South 11th Street. Second. That's been moved and seconded for consent. Uh, any discussion? Uh, Chair. Alderman Conley. Just, um, is this part of the railroad project? It doesn't say that. From my recollection, it is, but I'll have a public rec works director. It's not directly associated with the rail project. However, um, we are looking at doing some improvements to that corridor and acti the activity center could possibly go to that location. And there are only two buildings with no parking available at this location. So it's in essence almost un unusable. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks. Just follow up question. Absolutely, Alderman. Uh, Director, you say it might be used for an activity center. What does that <clears throat> refer to? Oh, well, there, there's a proposal uh, basically north of Capitol Avenue and um, south of the bus transfer facility to do an activity center uh, in the future to activate the area. So is that a, a city initiative to have an activity center? I'm confused. Uh, I believe it'll be, a, in essence, eventually a joint venture is my understanding. A what? A joint venture. A joint venture. A joint but venture with because this is the purchase I'll, of land, so it's naturally asked questions. What are the, we buying the land for? I'll let the mayor address. He had his hand up. Yeah, we'll have uh, Hanson come up to give a presentation. I think they touched on it previously uh, with the hub. They're extending the boundaries to the south, and what they want to do is uh, put in a um, kind of like a community center that could use be used for public space, but it'd be a combination with uh, the county and the city and all the other stakeholders associated with the rail project. So if we don't, if this doesn't happen, we're just holding land, the city is going to hold this land and we're not getting real estate taxes from this land. Yeah, that's correct. Essentially that's what happened. Yeah, I, I think we need a greater explanation before we go and spend this kind of money for something that's a maybe. I just well, well, it's uh, more than a maybe, I think. We'll have them give a presentation on next uh, Tuesday. Well, I'll come in and give the presentation on it. Does we this change one here is debate? for um, eighty-seven thousand, roughly ninety thousand, and then the next ordinance is for one hundred and forty thousand. We're talking about a quarter of a million dollars of spending here for a, a maybe. I just, uh, I'm not comfortable with that. Can I change my motion to debate, please? Um, do I have a second for that? Yep, second. Okay. It's been moved and seconded for debate. Is there any other discussion on this matter? 
Uh, in favor? Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And, um, are these are these being purchased with um, ARPA funds or? Uh, we were using sales tax uh, money for this fund ninety five. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, director. Any other questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any any opposed? Ayes have it. 20, <clears throat> excuse me, 2022-074, an ordinance authorizing execution of a contract pr for purchase and sale of real estate with JJ2 Properties, LLC, in an amount not to exceed $134,400 in closing costs in the amount of $3,000 for a total amount not to exceed $137,400 for the property located at 321 South 11th Street. Move for debate. So I can. It's been moved and uh, seconded for debate. Any discussion? Yes. Oh. So, uh, so these two properties, if you if you drive down 11th Street, are the last two Correct. properties left. Correct. Uh, from Jefferson to Capitol, uh, <clears throat> they're just the last two pieces sitting right in front of, I believe it's Lincoln School. Correct. Uh, and so it makes sense that they leave with everything else that's already gone or going to be gone. And I just think that um, uh, when they give their presentation, um, Next week, we'll have a better understanding of, of what's being planned there. Yeah. I, it's been uh, <laughs> moved and seconded for debate. Any other discussion? I'll just say that um, the, the two properties uh, um, will go, you know, hand-in-hand -hand with, with the uh, proposal. And, and I think once everybody sees it, it, it it's a great opportunity for Springfield to grow along with the railroad. So <clears throat> I appreciate you. Mr. Clerk. 2022-075, an ordinance authorizing the execution of a long-term intergovernmental lease agreement between the City of Springfield and the Office of the Illinois State Treasurer for the Office of Public Works. Move to consent. Second. It's been moved and seconded for consent. Is there any discussion on this? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Ayes have it. 2022-076, an ordinance annexing certain described real property located at 11 Lake Knowles Drive. Does this need to be debate, it's, or is this? There, this does not include an annexation agreement, so this could be on consent. Okay. Remember, Motion. annexation agreement requires a public hearing. This Motion is just a consent. regular okay. annexation. It's been moved and seconded for consent. Is there any discussion? Seeing there's no discussion, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No opposed. Ayes have it. General City Business, 2022-077, an ordinance ratifying a collective bargaining agreement with the International Association of Firefighters, Local Number 37, on behalf of the Springfield Firefighters from March 1st, 2021 through February 28th, 2025. Move to the consent. Second. It's been moved. Is there a second for debate? I hear a debate in there. Well, I move for consent, but I heard debate, so. All right. Do we have a second for debate? Second. It's been moved and seconded for debate. Uh, any discussion on this matter, Alderman Redpath. Corporation Council, what is the rate of increase for the, is there a pay schedule in here? Uh, yes, sir. What's that rate? Um, it, <clears throat> excuse me, let me turn to that. Uh, there's an Exhibit A to the ordinance that summarizes the, Five, two, <clears throat> excuse three, two, me, 1.75 in the first year, 2%, second year, 2%, third year, and 2.25% on the fourth year. Thank you. We did the debate. Uh, Big Joe, I ought to make Mick Miniman, and uh, Mr. John gave him the same. Thank you. Thank you. More discussion? Sure. Go ahead. Uh, Corporation Council, we've had a pattern on our collective bargaining agreements for a non pensionable bonus, and I think the next three uh, ordinances will show a non pensionable bonus um, for our collective bargaining units. And this particular ordinance did not have a uh, a uh, non-pensionable bonus for one of the uh, years. And could you explain why we're making a, a change for the firefighters that hasn't been there for all the other collective bargaining agreements? Well, you may recall, and uh, there are, you know, that there is some complexity to this because there was a lot of give and take and discussion. But you may recall that um, some, uh, during the last contract, the firefighters did agree to one year of a non-pensionable bonus that during that same time frame uh, the other various bargaining units did not so um, this reflects the fact that they had agreed before in addition uh, this is uh, a, a a lower 
agreement than they had actually asked for, and I'm happy to talk about the details. I just think that uh, of the uh, of the discussions, but it should be an executive section matter. Uh, so this reflects a compromise on all the parties. I would indicate to you that uh, in the discussion with the uh, right prior to the arbitration, it was settled prior to there being uh, uh, any sort of a actual arbitration process. But both parties indicated they were not entirely pleased or happy with the results, so maybe that means that this represents a compromise. So I, what you've initially indicated is very important. You said that in their prior contract they had a, a year of non-pensionable bonus, and I that, think they were the, the, is, the very earliest of the bargaining groups that agreed to that. That is correct. So that answers my question, and so we're really treating all the bargaining units on a, on a level, on a, on a par, basically. They're getting something very similar uh, for one of their um, contract years. Th th that is correct. That's been the policy to try to make sure that there's some uh, consistency, you know, through all the various agreements. Thank you. One more question. Sure. Automan Conley, then we'll go Automan right path. Thank you. Um, I I'm sorry. Can you, can you maybe clarify, um, Corporation Council, how many other contracts that, um, that we've already approved contain a, a non-pensionable bonus as opposed to standard raises? Um, I would say that uh, beginning, if you may recall, in the COVID year, the consensus uh, was that, um, and I, this, this was talked about which, quite a which bit. Which COVID year? Are we 2020 or 21? <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. We had two of those, didn't we? 2020. Thank you. Uh, I'll try to be precise, so thank you for that. Um, all contracts that came, expired that year, mm -hmm. year 2020, Every single uh, new contract had a non-pensionable bonus in that particular year. Thank and you. I would just tell you that that, um, uh, just by way of a comment, um, all of the bargaining units, I thought, acted very uh, responsibly in accepting that approach since there was ex uh, a lot of uncertainty what was going to happen, if you remember that, uh, that particular year. So... The, in the case of the firefighters, they actually had agreed to that the year before as a non-pensionable bonus. And it, uh, the idea of doing that going forward in, in part grew out of that. And there was some discussion at the council about trying to either do one-year agreements or do zero-year or do you know, a, a non-pensionable bonus just as a fiscal matter. Thank you very much yeah. for that clarification. Uh, on a minute right there. Uh, I don't know if this is for Corporation Council or Director McCarty, but uh, we set aside money for the lump sum payout for the firefighters. This contract goes back to March 1 last year. Um, can you tell me the lump sum that will this will calculate out to? I don't have that handy, but we'll be bringing forth a, uh, a uh, supplemental at some point to cover it. Okay, thank you. Any other questions on this matter? Automatic minimum. Uh, this is the f also regarding this contract. This is the first contract that I believe explicitly in the contract allows for no punitive action if someone has um, has THC in their system. I was waiting for it. <laughs> and so the I think the complicating factor is that THC remains in your system for up to 30 days. So I think by putting this in the contract, we've got really no way to know if someone has THC on the job or not. Um, I, I think a more um, blanket policy is, is the better policy that certain categories of workers just don't, aren't allowed to have THC in their system. That's the way it is in the military and it, it really worked well. So I'm concerned about this precedent of putting this in the contract. Um, we can discuss it more next week. I, and also, furthermore, I thought that the, the, when the state law came into being regarding THC, that um, employers were going to be allowed to retain authority to have uh, their own employment rules for their own employees. But the way this is written up here, if you look at the explanation of the contract, it says we're making this THC adjustment regarding marijuana in accordance with state and local laws. But I don't think we're compelled to, to provide this into the contracting 
uh, bargaining unit contract. Auto woman, uh, Desenzo. Um, it's my understanding that this is becoming a citywide policy that city employees can now use cannabis recreationally if they so choose. Mayor. That's except for anybody with a CDL license or the police department. That is correct. Mm -hmm. Anyone and, else? And just to maybe I could help clarify this a little bit. Um, this is one of the items that are a mandatory item of bargaining. The contract provides for what the state law says essentially is that um, it cannot be used as a basis for discharge unless a person's on the job under the influence. And so this has procedures to address that uh, issue. It also prohibits uh, any kind of ingestion 36 hours in advance of any work time. So um, this policy has the ability to correct if someone is perceived to be under the influence. No different than alcohol. No different than if a person is uh, using alcohol. And then if they're on the job and the supervisor believes that there's an objective basis that they may be exhibiting certain symptoms, no different than a police officer who pulls somebody over or uh, something of that nature, then there's a policy or procedure for testing if they're found to be uh, under the influence objectively using that objective criteria, i.e. the uh, actions of the employee, then they would be subject to uh, discharge. I don't want to did you have a, you good? No, I just, I had received word earlier, well, I don't know what date it is, last week that all city employees were now going to be able to consume or use cannabis recreationally and I just didn't think that had come before us before. We had discussed that policy change. Ottoman Raypath. Corporation Council pretty much covered what I was going to ask because it has to be a certain circumstance on what, why they are tested, if they're assumed to be under the influence or if they get in an accident. Uh, that somebody's is correct. driving or a fire an injury, truck or an police injury, car. Accident That's an automatic, automatic. That blood is correct. test. Yeah. Correct. All right. Thank you. And, and the mayor is correct. In other words, the law, just real briefly, really has only a couple of carve-outs. Interestingly, the federal law still has the use of marijuana, of cannabis, as illegal, specifically for CDLs, commercial driver licensed persons, of which, for example, and, and the mayor <coughs> certainly has raised this issue, is that uh, for example, all public works drivers have CDLs because of the size of the vehicles. Uh, however, um, for example, uh, fire trucks, et cetera, are actually exempt and do not require CDLs. Mm -hmm. And then the state law also provides for law enforcement, but the other various uh, groups are not involved in law enforcement, which means primarily police. Well, thanks. If, if that's of any help. Ottoman, yeah, um, McBenham. Because of this marijuana provision, I'll be a no vote on this next week. I think we're going down a, the wrong path. Uh, you know, marijuana is the type of drug that its use can be easily concealed. And if someone gets into a wreck um, and they've got THC in their system, you can't, because THC stays in your system for up to 30 days, we're not going to be able to make a definitive conclusion about whether that was the cause of the wreck or not. So I think the better rule is to say that um, we just have a set a higher standard for those in positions of great responsibility like our police and our firefighters, public works, any of those that are around heavy equipment, use equipment, and even those that have to exercise judgment. So I think we're going down the wrong path here. Um, I'm completely in favor of medicinal marijuana. I'm completely in favor of reducing the crime levels for use, but I think um, this recreational marijuana is um, the wrong path, and it's getting to our, we've had this discussion big time two or three years ago, maybe four years ago. It's going to get to our, our adolescents, uh, their use um, will increase. Um, my uh, daughter is a teacher in the high schools for seven years now, and her husband's a teacher in the high schools, and um, they've witnessed a... Uh, a uh, pattern that's not good with the THC. Thank you for your comments. Uh, Alderman Fujin. Um, 
correct me if I'm wrong, but I think THC is prevalent in CBD also. It has THC in it. Correct. Uh, so whether it's marijuana or gummies that you consume with uh, CBD, and a lot of people take the CBD for um, pain relief, for relaxation, you whatever. Know what I think we're getting into pizzas? a bad area. Well, I think CDB is typically used on the out, used on the outside of your body, and it can't no. get no. That's not true. Gummies. And furthermore, it doesn't have the levels of THC that triggers a positive test. Well, I, I know, but is there a level of, of THC that we're talking about, or just THC? Because I know s some people don't want to take. Uh, CBD if they have a CDL license because they get tested at any time and that THC shows up in their bloodstream. Yes, sir. Uh, so I think we need to investigate all this and get some better answers. Any, any, any others on this uh, topic? All right. We have a uh, uh, motion in, uh, for debate in a second. In, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Eyes have it. 2022 078, an ordinance authorizing execution of a tentative collective bargaining agreement with the International Association of Machinists and Aerospace Workers, District Number 9, from October 1st, 2020 through September 30th, 2025. Move of consent. Second. Just to keep these all on the same level. What, what, what's the reason? What the, I mean, the one for debate was uh, because of the drug thing, but I don't think all these have that matter, do they? I don't think so. Are you still wanting to debate uh, Alderman McMinnery? I, re I reviewed the um, agreement pretty quick, so I just want to make sure I, I'm, I'm okay with the agreement. So I'd like to have some more time to study it. Do I have a second for debate? Second. second. It's been moved and seconded for debate. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Uh, ayes have it. 2022-079, an ordinance authorizing a tentative agreement with the International Union of Operating Engineers, Local 399, Dahlman Filter Plant, from October 1st, 2020 through September 30th, 2023, for the Office of Public Utilities. Motion for consent. Second. second. Got a uh, well, motion for consent and a second. I'm sorry, older person <laughs> purchased. He's going to veto it with, with, with his older, single vote. Older woman <laughs> I'm going to put this on debate because of the other two. All right. The way our rules set. work is it it's got to be unanimous to go on the consent agenda. Yep. It's been it's it's don't been Don't you guys uh, still get been, a second too right now? It's been motion Well, if I don't if it doesn't get a second on debate then it doesn't come out of committee. You're so. getting mansplained on International Women's, Women's Day. Day. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna let <laughs> All right. So do we have a second on his uh debate on all the big big bit of his debate? I'll second it. All right, it's been moved and it's been seconded. Let him die. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Ayes have it. 2022-080, an ordinance authorizing acceptance and execution of the Youth Economic Opportunities Initiative for the City of Springfield grant number FCSAY06273 in the amount of $177,534 from the Illinois from the State of Illinois Department of Human Ser Services for funding of the AmeriCorps program for the Office of Planning and Economic Development. Moved to consent. Second. second. And moved and, uh, moved and seconded for consent. Is there any discussion on this matter? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> Ayes have it. 2022-081, a resolution allocating 2022 bond volume cap. Consent. Moved to consent. Second. 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 It's been moved and seconded for consent. Any, all in favor? Aye. Aye. <clears throat> any opposed? Ayes have it. 2022-088, an ordinance to increase the number of Class E liquor licenses by one for Jerk Shop on Wheels, LLC, Incorporated, and doing business as Jerk Shop Com Go, located at 219 South 5th Street. Motion for consent. Second. Okay. And mo moved and consented for uh, consent. Is there any discussion on this matter? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Present. Noted. 2022-089, in order to authorizing a decrease in the number of Class D lurk licenses by one due to closure of business by Millions Crab Springfield Incorporated, doing business at Millions Crab, located at 2100 West White Oaks Drive. Move consent. Second. It's been moved and seconded for consent. Is there any discussion on this matter? All in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Any opposed? Present. Noted. Ayes have it. 2022-090, an ordinance authorizing a decrease in the number of Class D liquor licenses by one due to closure of business by Brandy Garrett doing businesses A and B Barbecue located at 933 North Grand Avenue West. Move for consent. Second. It's been moved and seconded for consent. Is there any discussion on this matter? All in favor? Real quick. Uh, uh, President, the hand out. There's, there needs Noted. to be a technical uh, change on this. It's sure. North's misspelled. I don't know if that makes a difference, but... Thank you. The note. I appreciate you, sir. Well, maybe it is a note. It's been moved and seconded for consent. <laughs> any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All, any opposed? Ayes have it. Present. Noted. 2022-091, an ordinance authorizing execution of an intergovernmental cooperation agreement with the Springfield Sangamon County Regional Planning Commission for 2022 planning services and authorizing payment in the amount not to exceed $195,000 from January 1st, 2022 through December 31st, 2022. Move for consent. Second. It's been moved and seconded for consent. Is there any discussion on this matter? Autowoman Conley. Thank you very much. Um, just clarification, does this include um, redistricting maps? Yes. Yep. Oh, okay, sorry. that was a quick question answer. Thank you. <laughs> And I'm here to answer any questions if you need me, but I've been working with Mr. Zirkel and we were going to converse again tomorrow about the redistricting process, but it does include that. One, well, actually, what's the timing, do you think, for us to get those, get our look at them? He's going to answer that question for me. <laughs> I have staff already allocated for it, and we're going to pull up. What, what I, I Correct. apologize, I was going to say, That's we will go, we'll circulate just a, uh, a schedule of the actual dates. The statute sets out the number of days, and I'll double check that, and then... Uh, I had indicated that we would provide a copy of the consent decree because it has certain requirements for the yes. districts. Sure. And they've, they have, you have finished like a preliminary breakdown based on the demographics by existing ward from 2010 to 2020 with the new uh, uh, census data, and that will be circulated. But it's not in the form of a map. It just shows existing and the population in each ward. Right. In addition to redrawing the map, and I'll, I'll give you kind of the process. We just finished District 186's process. Okay. And, in fact, they have uh, two versions of their draft map now that the uh, members are, are reviewing. And then uh, two weeks from yesterday, we will go to the school board meeting to answer any questions they have. But basically what we do is we start with the raw data in a spreadsheet based on existing districts or wards in this case. And that figures out exactly, and it, we not only deal with population, but also um, ethnic breakdown. And so we know at that point in time which wards have lost population and by what race those wards have, have lost population and which may have gained. We all know that Springfield did have a decrease in, in population. So we start working with those numbers. So there will be boundary shifts. There's no question about it. Do I anticipate they'll be sizable? No. But nonetheless, um, we, we will work with those. With District 186, what we did is we provided two versions of the map um, for them to, to see. Um, I think it's, and we also provide the raw data. So I think it's, it's a very logical process that works. Um, and then from there, they'll, they'll be available for all of you to review, and there'll be a public hearing process as well. I, I certainly appreciate you applying logic to this process. I do my best. Thank <laughs> you. You do. Thank you. Um, uh, Ottoman Williams. Sorry. Yes. No, that's um, fine. No problem. So when I first got on the council, I, I had a conversation, mm -hmm. and you guys didn't do mapping. Uh, so you did <clears> you, the last map that was drawn, did the Sangamon County Regional Planning do that map? No, we did not. Okay. Um, the, the map that was done um, that you're under now 10 years ago was done by the Sangamon County Information Services Department by Tracy Garrison and also working with Don Gray's office at the clerk's office. Um, and you're right, I did answer the question that, that we don't do mapping. We only did District 186, but I had some persuasive people contact me and uh, who may, may be in this room and ask us to actually do it and thought an independent body would be most appropriate to do it and we, we're gladly well, you know, willing so to so that the, process. So the key word for me, uh, Molly, is, is independent. Mm -hmm. As you know, um, when I joined the regional board, 
uh, I had concerns about that, and I had to learn that just because you're located in the Sangamon County building does not mean that you are, in fact, Sangamon County. And the answer I had got was that Joe Aviel drew the map 10 years ago. My concern with uh, this map is that I do not want, uh, let me ask another question first. So did you draw the county board map? No, we were not involved not. with that at you all. You wasn't involved? No, okay. we were not. Because that's where my hesitancy comes with anything to do with Sangamon County when it comes to this council and the county. I mean, there's pretentious people that may not want to admit it, but they don't see this on their boards. They don't really agree with us on many things. I appreciate that you are teaching me as I'm participating on the planning commission that you are an independent body just located in that building. Uh, so I'm in support of, of what, what we're getting ready to do, but I want to make it clear that uh, anybody that was involved and in how they did Democrats at the county level, that this does not happen at this horseshoe level. And it's clear that it is my understanding that whatever you guys do, ultimately it lands back here for us absolutely to make those decisions it does and and basically what the process is with this and what we have used uh, we have not done the word maps before but i intend to use the same process that we do for 186 they ask for two versions of the map based on the population data we attach the population data to each of those versions of the maps it's very visual to where you know where where the the district lines are shifting um, there was a couple of basic things that they asked us to do. First of all, is to make sure that the districts remain compact and contiguous, uh, which is what good reapportionment, what remapping does. It also asked us to stay within the current existing precinct lines as much as possible. We will do that again, keeping in mind that precinct lines can change. Um, under the Illinois County's Code, the county clerks are authorized to make changes in precinct lines, and they have to be approved by the uh, requisite county board by June of each year. Um, I actually did investigate that before this meeting and they <coughs> redrew the precinct lines in 2010 and then again in 2013 and again in 2014. Um, and in fact, in 2013, they changed the precinct lines because the ward maps changed. Sure. And so there is some difference of alignment um, that, that goes on with that. But as I always, and, I, and you're learning us from the Regional Planning Commission meetings, as I always tell people, we are a very independent body and we are data driven. So where the population moved and shifted, that's where the lines are going to go. Um, we don't care about political parties. We don't look at them. We're here to do a job and be as, as independent as possible and we will continue to uphold that. Follow up comment. And I, 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 do, I do appreciate that. You know, I am political, so I'm always concerned. I don't want us <laughs> to go through what the county board just went through, and I don't like how, how it came out at the county board. And finally, I'll just say, um, are the precinct lines done, the, the, the new one? I am not involved in drawing those. I do know that the county board has not approved new precinct lines, and so, I don't know if they intend to by June or not. I'm not involved with that, sir. Okay, thank you. All right, the order is uh, Alderman Hanauer, all the woman, Desenzo, and uh, all the woman purchase. What, well, what, what happened? Uh, first, I didn't I see you. Forgot see, you was quiet like oh, I'd be. Alderman okay. <laughs> right. Donnelly, Hanauer, Desenzo, purchase. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be brief. It's all good. Uh, I'll be brief, Mr. Chair. Thank you so much. Um, you know, what I just don't want us to, what to happen, what I don't want to happen is, I don't want us to, uh, Corporation Council, I'm glad you mentioned the timeline because. I don't want to wait to the last minute. No. I don't want to be scrambling around and having to make decisions where we could potentially get sued and it creates a mess. Let's let's get on it right now. And, and uh, if you could get us the timeline so we can see what the statutory deadline is. But yet, I know we're going to be well ahead of that. That would be appreciated. Thank you. Go ahead, Alderman Hanauer. Thank you. Um, one thing, and it's I guess it would be up to our up to the the horseshoe here. One of the things that I would recommend that we 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 tell them is we don't run aldermen against aldermen, sitting aldermen against aldermen. Yeah. And if we, if I have to make the motion for that, I'm happy to do it. Um, you know, uh, Roy, I think that I, I, I understand there's, there's political parties in that. I don't look at that up here. Um, I feel like we, we do a good job of, of, of separating that. And, uh, um, you know, I mean, I voted with everybody. And so, 
and I know a lot of other people, and I, it, you know, it doesn't matter. Um, this is a nonpartisan board. Whether we like it or not, that's that's the way it is. That's the way the the founders of uh, this this uh, uh, consent decree put it. So, the other issue I'd like to say is, this, I, I guess a question is, you go based on the the, la the census, right? Yes. So we're going to have some issues where we've got some wards where they didn't do very well on the census, filling out the census. And that's going to that's going to be where the problems are. That it will that will be where the problems are. And you know, we have to follow the consent decree. Number 1, that's the big thing. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know if we need a motion on the floor to to not pit sitting aldermen against each other alderman district 186 in the guidance that we got from their legal counsel we actually got a document from their legal counsel and that was also a request and we complied with that wholeheartedly um, we are here to do the bidding of of the city council and whatever documents we get from um, from corporation council is what we will follow so it's not an unusual request is my point and and uh, we make sure that we complied with that Mayor, do we need a motion for that then no, that's one of the uh, parameters we set forward with Corporation Council. Okay, great. Okay. Thank you. All right. But uh, I'm sure I'll come up with the I, parameters I and distribute them. I apologize. I just I was going to say, remember that um, the the process always ends up back with the council. So what you'll end up with is you want to use your uh, mic. Sorry, I apologize. Um, what you'll end up with is perhaps one or two choices. But in looking at the preliminary data. There's not huge variations. In other words, um, there will be some adjustments on boundaries purely be based on population, but all that information will be fully available to everybody. You'll be able to see it. And the uh, issues that are being talked about, about compactness, uh, the uh, uh, preferences about placement of existing uh, office holders, that's all what I would call very normal consideration and process. So, but in the final choice, final decision is right here. So it, you'll end up with a couple, maybe a couple of different options, and but all the information will be present and be available to be reviewed. The biggest concern that, uh, and we've, you and I have talked about this, is uh, trying to be in a position where you're not potentially splitting precincts, because I don't know how you would do recounts or things of that nature, or make sure you got the right ballots if you've got uh, splitting precincts. I've got but, three. But that, uh, I was going to say, that may or may not even be an issue. We, we just are not sure at this exact moment. And the school board's map really is using the existing uh, precinct structure, it does. correct? It does. So if we kind of follow that pattern of using the precinct structure, right. that at least minimizes the chance that that will become a problem later. Right. But again, final decision is here, you know, Absolutely. At, at the council on boundaries. Uh, Autowoman Desenzo. Thank you. Um, oh. Alderman Williams, I would just like to point out that technically there are seven Democrats around the horseshoe and three Republicans, and very rarely have I ever seen a 7-3 <laughs> vote on this council. Um, so and just lines. just to, you know, I think we do genuinely uh, vote and act in a nonpartisan way when we're sitting up here, regardless of our politics outside of here. Um, the split precincts are a big problem, especially in Ward 6. Uh, my ward that I currently represent is neither contiguous or compact. Uh, there are seven polling places in Ward 6. Seven. Uh, for me to take lunch and snacks, and I mean, it takes the whole day just to get breakfast and then lunch. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, something's got to be worked out in certain wards in the city. It just doesn't make sense, current wards. Auto woman purchase. Um, Alderman Hanauer addressed my concern sure? with, with okay. the precinct lines and also making sure that we don't cross over because I know that I stay on 6th Street and Alderman Williams has 7th Street. So if you shift over, you're putting them right on, on me where my personal home is. So just making sure that's not happening either. I mean, Williams and uh, Red Well, Path. yeah, so that was my point, you know, when I looked at what the, what happened at the county level. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm, I've, I've moved on this. Actually, you can ask the mayor and, and legal counsel, I've moved. I'm glad you're independent. 
I'm glad we get the last say. I will support you, Alderman, on your on, on your uh, motion of, of what you were saying as far as us not being put in another one, because that's what actually happened at the county level. And that's why you say, and, and, and I know we pretend, I know in Springfield, Illinois, we're nonpartisan in our city council. I, I, I actually got on this council and I was surprised at how how we don't practice partisanship. For the most part, we really do look out for the interests of the citizens, and we do. But in reality, I also know the political uh, powers that's outside of us can have an influence and do have an influence at times, especially with something like a map and precincts and wards. And I mean, that's just the reality. So that's why I'm very upfront about this and was clear when I said, oh no, they can't write her map, not after seeing what happened at the county board level. So I appreciate you, Mally. You know that, you know, I try to behave here. I try to behave over there, but I just feel like, you know, everybody has a role to play. I understand. Thank so you thank you. you. Thank you for your comments, Alderman Redpath. And then Alderman Purchase for a follow-up. You know, I hope we're not using the census, because obviously the <laughs> census was a disaster. Uh, there's some areas in the city that were very, very low, so that's, it's not going to be, it's not going to work. And uh, that's what concerns me, is because some some were, I mean, even all 10 wards were low in the sentence, census, but some wards were terrible, and and we got to take all that into consideration. One of the things that we also found that we looked at, and having land use planners do this, you get the benefit of, of that side of our planning ability as well, I suppose, and, and that is we're very familiar with where new subdivisions, where new developments have been put in. We're, we're very aware of how many housing units those are. We are also as equally aware of where there are housing units or vacant properties. And so we can kind of juxtapose, and we found that when we were doing the um, uh, District 186 maps is, you know, staff was doing them, but we spent a lot of time with the, the text parcel viewer and our recent maps, other maps, and doing overlays and figuring out to see if that data did make sense. Right. Um, and and made some, some assumptions out of necessity because you can't go person for person, and each ward is not going to have the exact same number of people because it, it's impossible to do that. But nonetheless, I think that what we use for the District 186 and the outcome of that is something that made sense in their, in their two maps. And at the same time was the minimal disruption of those ward lines or those District 186 lines. Right. The boundaries shifted a little. They didn't shift a lot. And, and to follow up with Alderman DeCenso's comments, I've been on this council since 1987. I don't really believe that we've ever had a political map drawn up. Uh, we've always been pretty consistent about you know, even no matter what battles we have here on the floor, it, uh, it, when we get to this part of it, it's we're doing what's right for the city, and I think that uh, I think we're going to see that again. I want to. I want to. That's okay. You sure? Yeah. Audemon Williams. Final, yeah. So final yeah, yes, my fine. So the precincts are drawn by uh, well, I guess Mr. Gray. It, so Mr. Gray's office would do the precincts, and then they would go to. The county, county board? The county board. Mm -hmm. And they approved the precinct lines. Correct. Correct. The, the precinct redrawing is handled by the county clerk in every county. I don't know about Cook, but at least every downstate county. And it has to be, those precinct maps has to be ratified by the county clerk, or the county board, as I understand it. Okay. And that has to occur by June of every year. Okay. And that way you start July 1st with new, with new precincts. Now, my understanding is the reason it was not done this year by June, or I guess last year by June, is that the legislative maps were late coming out of the General Assembly, and so it was impossible to know what the legislative maps were for it to trickle down into the county-level precincts. And so because of that, Sangamon County did not adopt new precincts by, Jan or by June 1st. Whether or not that's going to happen this year, no one can tell me. And as I said, I'm not involved with that, so I, I don't have privy I'm not privy to the information nor have I seen any draft maps I don't even know if there are draft maps I don't know what's going on at that time at this current time here oh, sure I don't want sorry I, don't want I, I just I point. need to clarify something because um Alderman Redpath you, you said something that sort of I guess triggered some questions for me I thought that we had to use census data as, we as do. our base numbers we do okay 
So I understand his concern about those areas of the city that may have not had good participation in the census, but the way the remaps are done is it is based on census data, the best available census data that we have. That's not to say that when you're looking at a consideration when it's like, do I take this group of people and put them here or here, that there can't be a little bit of logic so also applied to it. So you do have flexibility. It. Okay. Correct. I, I just census data is the driver we're, of, we're bound, of. though, by law to use correct. the census. Correct. So there's no okay. lack of clarity on that. Correct. Right. Okay. Thank but, you. Uh, but again, it, uh, corporate, it, part of it, it comes ahead. back to us, and we we know that correct. the pop, uh, we know the populations are higher than the census. So we, we do have that final say. The, the city council has the final say on the maps. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. Any other questions on this matter? All right. Ooh. What a night. All right, next is unfinished business. Is there uh, any? Uh, vote? You need to take a vote on that. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's been motion and consented <laughs> consent for, consent? Uh, <laughs> it's been motion and seconded for consent, but uh, I, I know uh, Alderman Williams, are you comfortable with that? I know you yes. have some questions, you sure? All right. All in favor? All right. All right. All right. Any opposed? All right, ayes have it. Now. Thank you. No problem, thank you. We appreciate you. Um, next is unfinished business. Is there any unfinished business to come before Here. this council? Alderman Donlin. I've received a couple of texts, one from the gentleman sitting, sitting back to my <laughs> right here, uh, that the uh, annual St. Patrick's Day parade has been postponed oh. one week, and uh, the mayor shaking his head. So my question, mayor and slash corporation council, is since we've approved the street closures and there's other city ministerial uh, decisions that have been made, what, what do we need to do, if anything, as a, as a body today or next week? Um, if we <clears throat> will take a look at the ordinance, that just happened, I think, in the last hour or two. Um, and we may need to adjust the date for the closings, uh, but we will have that for the next council meeting next Tuesday. Uh, thank Mr. you. Chair. Give me one second. Um, can, can I, uh, all the women purchase. Yes, does that also include with the liquor and that hearing all that again? Correct. everything around? So will something be put out about that to the businesses for this weekend? Since uh, they are I believe that that'll happen uh, tomorrow. Okay. Uh, but I think that the group organizing the parade actually has a pretty good uh, process for talking with their members, you know, persons participating. Uh, also, uh, Todd in the uh, Liquor Commission office has primarily mostly everyone's emails and contact information. So we'll try to make sure that uh, that information is out there. Anybody who's received a permit yes. will automatically, they don't have to reapply, we'll just automatically, Mayor had already directed that, uh, we'll just automatically uh, consider that to be for the following week in light of the delay. And that communication will be there with them consistently too, letting them know like, hey, you can't do if this. If there are this questions weekend. about it and they'll try to reach out. Okay. Yeah. Audible, uh, McMiniman. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Do we know uh, what prompted the one-week postponement of the parade? Weather. Weather and SHG. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the weather. I'll go with the SHG. weather. I think it's SHG, too. There's there's quite a lot of people that may be over there <laughs> after they win the semifinal. Don't say that. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> So what Ain't happens if there's a massive thunderstorm in the forecast for the following Saturday? I mean, we have walked in this parade <laughs> in sub-zero temperatures. I don't so, know about you guys. My phone's blowing up over Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, come on. I'm not Irish. Any, Suit up, everybody. Any, anybody, any Me other either. I'm Italian. Comments. Any other comments? <laughs> Hey, you, unbelievable. Anybody, anybody. <laughs> All right. Any other unfinished business to come before this council? Next is new. The mayor. mayor. Oh, I'm sorry, Mayor. <laughs> Y'all got to raise the yep. hand. Now That's I know right. how you feel. <laughs> I'm glad you're on Go my ahead. That's my the chair. Go ahead, Mayor. Uh, there's a vaccine clinic at the YMCA on Carpenter Street this Sunday from 1 to 4. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Autumn hand on. on new business. Yes, uh, yes, sir. Go ahead. I just want to um, take this opportunity to, to uh, congratulate SHG for making it to state. I was a little concerned with the fact that two years ago when they went to state, they actually practiced and it caused a pandemic. You know, 70 something <laughs> years before they and then their pandemic stopped them from going to state. So uh, good luck to them and, um, and they play 
Friday at 10, 10 o'clock at the assembly hall. Yeah. Yeah. State Farm Center, I'm sorry. That <laughs> Dating yourself. Definitely good luck to them. Any Anyone else with new business? Yep. Come before Alderman McMenamin. I think Alderman Donald brought up something important uh, when we were talking about, we don't know what's in the future. I think you're talking about the economy because of the Ukraine, Russia situation, and uh, it's affecting the world economy, and that, that eventually uh, trick, trickles down to the local economy. More importantly, to just a, in my view, just a, a, the worst kind of crime taking place there um, with uh, one nation invading another nation and causing all the, the suffering and pain and property destru destruction. And I just want to know if, if Mr. Mayor, you thought about a, bringing a proclamation or some kind of resolution to the council uh, to, talk in a, to, to support freedom and um, what the Ukrainians are, are, are um, um, all about. I've uh, talked to Barb Mullaney at the uh, Rotary. I know they've uh, been in touch with families in Ukraine, so uh, hopefully uh, she's going to approach the Rotarians about uh, coming up with some way to show support. But on the resolution and our proclamation, I'd have to get with Corporation Council on that. We haven't uh, stepped in that, but I think a lot of people want to do something. They're just not sure what to do, and that would be a perfect avenue using the Rotary since they accept international students uh, and have a good connection to possibly uh, use them as a kind of a contribution point, but those haven't been finalized or anything of that nature. But you, you done, good mayor? Uh, Budget Director McCarty, you got something to say, buddy? Come on. <clears throat> Keep the fires going here. Bill. <laughs> Actually, I came up because I wanted to send you out in a good mood. <laughs> I'm trying to. I forgot one critical piece, and it is completely germane <laughs> Sleeping dogs live. to your issue. <laughs> your sheet is incorrect because when you're looking at salaries and hourlies, you have to make a determination and understand the difference between a 37 and a half hour a week employee and a 40. Your sheet reflects the cemetery director as a 37 and a half. She's in fact a 40 hour a week employee. Huge difference. Director, it's not you, director you put the 14.2 percent increase on the form, not me. I took your form, took it to the mayor, and that's why this all came up. I don't care what what raises anybody gets, but you got to put down what they're going to actually get. So let's, it's over with. Go okay. sit down. I'll, I'll send it to you. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> Is there any citizens that would like to come before this council tonight? Yes, one has signed up. I have one, All right. one more announcement. Uh, tomorrow sure. night at uh, the Springfield Firefighters Club, there's a CWLP public forum at 6 o'clock to 7.30 to uh, discuss the circulators. Correct, oh. Alderman? It's a ward meeting that I'm going to get lambasted on. So. Sounds like a good time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have uh, one citizen signed up to speak. Yeah, Mr. Sam Arnold. <laughs> Mr. Arnold, come on up. Please direct all comments to the chair. I know, I'm trying to get up here. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, council members. I have a couple questions. One, what reason does the city public works department have to go around and pick up toys out of a yard of my grandchildren and destroy them? Now, I would like to have an answer maybe by next week or the week after. The reason why that was done. The address was 2201 South 12th. My next question is due to the house fire that I had over on North 3rd. Okay. The city forced the property owner that I was buying the property from 
to have the place demoed and cleared out within five days of the fire. But there's houses on that street that's been fighting, been a fire that's been still standing for over 10 years. Why? I'd like to have an answer to that. Why am I being forced to have all that cleared up and out of the way? You know, that quick. I'm just lucky I had an out of state investigator fire investigator come in and investigate the fire before it was demolished. And that, and that independent investigation turned your investigator here at the fire department upside down because it was CWLP's fault. And that can be proved. <clears throat> or did somebody want to do a cover-up? I said, or. I'm not accusing nobody. I said, or. A cover-up. I would like to have that answer, too. Anything else, Mr. All right, thank you, sir. What was the address on 3rd Street you said for the property? Yes, 2231 North 3rd. I had that house fire in November. All right, sir. Anything else? Mr. No, that, that'd be it. All right, thank you, sir. We'll appreciate you. We'll look into it. Any other citizens, Mr. Clark, that you know about? No one else has signed up, Chairman. Good job. All right. Um, before, <clears throat> sure, Miss Alice. Thank you. Sure. Sir. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> That's okay. You don't have to work so hard. <laughs> I got you covered. <laughs> you got me covered. I got you covered. Okay. Um, we had our sidewalks uh, made, uh, made good a couple of years ago. And um, on some of them where you put the little curb down, the grass is growing up in them where they weren't sealed <coughs> properly. And I have asked Public Works to help me get them taken care. I have two ladies on Livingston that has complained to me about it. And I said I would say something about it. And I have talked to Mr. Bottoms and I have talked to Mr. Ayers. And I get the same answer. Pull them out. <laughs> I said, well, okay, I'll pull them out. So can I see men when I do pull them out? and charge the city for my cement? Answer that, Mr. Mayor. I'll, I'll have to I'll converse with Nate Bottom. <laughs> <laughs> that's <what> I, <laughs> <laughs> but I have, that's really a big problem. It's Mr. a full Bottom. moon. And really, truly, I want to know when they're going to pick up the leaves uh, in our area. When, And how can I get a tree that's a gun ball in a private uh, yard cut down since uh, I fell yesterday. Oh. It's next door. Call a contractor. And when you had that big win, they all came on my street. You know? I feel like I'm picking up gum bars. <laughs> I don't know. And they hurt. I'm going to tell you something. They hurt when you fall on them. On. <laughs> and I don't have very much back there anymore. So, you know, now, Mayor, you figure that one out, okay? We're working on it. Yeah, yeah. yeah I guess you are working on it, okay? Yes. And another thing is I want to, and I have a, a real nice project for you, uh, a compliment for you, I should say. 
I was on the car, uh, on um, Chatham Road, uh, Buns Lane to Chatham Road, and a lot of work is being done. Uh, I noticed that they were really working at it, putting uh, things in. This one guy was doing one of the prettiest jobs I ever did, was sand, uh, putting a, a concrete in, and it was really smooth. Okay? Ms. Alice. Why can't all of them do that? Direct Find the chair, Ms. Alice. Direct the chair. He's very good at it. Alice, you have, to, you, have to direct the, you have to direct your comments. Well, he doesn't question. quite understand yet. He's learning. He's on the learning program, okay? He hasn't learned to fight yet, okay? Oh, my God. <laughs> but he's All right, still, anything else, Miss Alice? Huh? Anything else, Don? Anything else that was about our Really? Tonight? I can tell a whole lot, but I'm not. Right. Mayor, have a beautiful day. You have a beautiful day. And if it rains on St. Patrick's Day, please have an umbrella. <laughs> Thank you. Madam. Thank you. Ottoman Donnelly. Yeah, Mr. Chair, uh, I hesitate to try to follow that. But anyway, um, on a positive note, I just want to wish uh, Ward 6 Alder Woman, Alder Woman Kristen DeCenzo an early happy birthday. So happy birthday. Thank you. Happy birthday. Thank you very happy much. Birthday. So. That's why you don't want it changed. The you big 5 0. Oh, I'll say yeah. it. I'm yeah. proud. Yeah. I like getting older. Wait a minute, though. Before we get out of here, though, we, we must do something very, very important, though, and it's very serious, though. We, we had a uh, Chatham Board of Trustee that, that passed away in, a, in, a, in an accident, tragically, so we, we want to pay our respects as a body and uh, have a moment of solace for help. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman. Auto woman purchase. And I would be remiss, there's three women sitting up here, and today is Happy International. Four. I'm sorry, I am sorry, four. four. <laughs> you know Five, I can. Five, six, seven. Of all, all the women <laughs> in the room, it is Happy International Women's Day. So I would like to say that to all of the women here in Springfield, Illinois, and throughout the country. Absolutely. I second uh, that. Saying nothing else before. Post it to adjourn. <laughs> <That's Okay. laughs> Please. Oh, my goodness. Today There's somebody else. Man. Uh, man. Yeah. Well. I'm a, I'll try to get us out. Oh, man. Let me go find out what's talking about. She <laughs> fell. We ain't even oh, got gun balls on that shit. How are you, sir? What you guys, uh, what did you and Mr. <laughs> yeah. Our direction settling down. <laughs> oh, yeah. My voice is, we had an interesting.